everybody. It's Monday. I'm Matthew Laria, and you're watching the Faith for Life broadcast. Let's pray and release faith over today's broadcast, and then we're going to get right into the Word. Father, we do thank you again today, Lord, for your Word. Lord, we ask you today for a revelation of your Word. We ask you for grace and help to receive it, to hear it right, to put it into practice, and to see it work in our lives. And we do thank you for it. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, all this week on the broadcast, we're going to be doing a series of teachings entitled The Truth About Anxiety and Depression. Now, friend, over the last 20 to 30 years, the enemy has really been making a push where anxiety and depression are concerned. And more people are riddled with it today. More people are being overcome by it today than ever before. And the enemy is the one behind it. Now this week on the broadcast, we're going to be talking about the truth about anxiety and depression. Well, where do we go to get the truth? Where do we find the truth? We find the truth in God's word. God is the standard for what is true and what is not true. And his word is the truth. And so if we want the truth about anxiety and depression, then we must go to his word. Now, why should you and I want the truth? Why should we want to get the truth? Well, Jesus said in John 8 that the truth will make you free. And friend, the truth of God's word will make you free from anxiety and depression. And that's my heart for you this week on the broadcast, that the truth you receive from the Word of God this week on the broadcast will make you free from anxiety and depression. Not dealing with it for the rest of your life or for the next 25 years, not dealing with it off and on, but being completely free from it. Now this week on the broadcast, we're going to be looking at anxiety and depression from a scriptural point of view. We're going to be looking at it from the perspective of God's word. We are not looking at anxiety and depression from a natural perspective or from a worldly perspective. We are looking at it from God's perspective and from the perspective of God's word. Now, the people I'm talking to this week on the broadcast are those of you that have made this word the final authority in your life. What does that mean? That means you've decided you're going to govern your life by this word come hell or high water. You're going to believe what this word says. You're going to think in line with what this word says. And you're going to do your best to do everything this word tells you to do. To make the Word of God final authority means that you've elevated this Word above everything else. You've elevated this Word above medical science. You've elevated this Word above the opinions of experts. You've elevated this Word even above what you think or what you understand. You've made this Word the final authority in your life. And if that's you, then I'm talking to you this week on the broadcast. Now, maybe you're sitting there thinking, well, I don't really deal with anxiety or depression. Well, friend, all of us at some point in time will deal with fear, will deal with sorrow of some level. And so, yes, you do on some level face these things in your life. But the other thing is you also want to be equipped with the word so that you can minister to people that are battling anxiety and depression. And so you will get that equipping as well this week on the broadcast. Now, let's start today's broadcast by going over to John chapter 14. And we're going to look there at verse 27. Jesus said this. He said, Peace I leave with you. My peace I give unto you. Not as the world gives, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, Neither let it be afraid. Now, friend, here's the first truth 
we're going to give you this week on the broadcast about anxiety and depression. And it's this. God's will for your life is peace and joy. And it is not His will for your life that you be riddled with anxiety and depression. God's will for your life is not anxiety and depression. That's not what He wants for you. No, He wants you to walk in peace he wants you to walk in joy. And we can see that from that verse right there. Jesus said, peace I give unto you. My peace I give unto you. Well, if he wanted you to be riddled with anxiety and depression, he certainly wouldn't have given you his peace. You know, in Philippians chapter 4, verse 6, it says this, be careful for nothing. The Amplified Bible says, be anxious about nothing. But in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God, and the peace of God that passes all understanding will keep your heart and mind through Christ Jesus. God's will for your life, friend, is not anxiety, not panic attacks. No, His will for your life is peace. That's what God wants for you. He also wants joy for your life. In Philippians chapter 4, verse 4, it says this, Rejoice always, and again I say rejoice. The word rejoice means to be glad. When does God want you to be glad? He wants you to be glad all the time. He doesn't want you to be filled with sorrow and broken down by depression. That's not His will for your life. In John 17, 13, Jesus said this, Now I come to you, and these things I speak in the world, that they might have my joy fulfilled in themselves. And so Jesus wants you and I to have His joy, and He's given it to us. In James uh, chapter 1, verse 2, it tells us to count it all joy. When you fall into divers temptations or trials or testings. And so you can see from those verses, God's will for your life is joy. God's will for your life is peace. That's what He wants for you. Anxiety and depression is not the will of God for your life. And that is the first truth about anxiety and depression. That God doesn't want it for you. And it's not His will for your life. His will for your life is joy and peace. Now let's go over to Isaiah chapter 53. And let's look at a few scriptures there in Isaiah 53. And as we're flipping there, friends, say this with me. God's will for my life. Come on, say it with me. God's will for my life is joy and peace. Praise the Lord. Isaiah 53 and let's begin reading there in verse 4. And in verse 4 it says this, Surely He, Jesus, has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Verse 5 says, The chastisement or the punishment for our peace was upon Him. And then down there in verse 7, it says, He was oppressed and afflicted. The word oppressed means He was harassed. He was distressed. The word afflicted means he was downcast and depressed. Why am I reading those verses to you? Jesus bore anxiety for you and me. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. He bore depression for you and me. Why, why do I say that? Because he bore our griefs. He carried our sorrows. He was oppressed and afflicted and harassed and distressed and depressed for us so that we wouldn't have to be. Come on, God does not want you depressed. He was, does not want you anxious. He wants you to walk in joy. He wants you to walk in peace. You know, in Galatians chapter 3, it says that Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us. 
so that the blessing of Abraham might come on us. So Jesus became a curse for us so that the blessing of Abraham could come on us. Now, if you go to Deuteronomy 28, you can read right there in the, in the back part of that chapter, verses 15 through, I think, 68, it lists what the curse is. And part of that curse is this, that you shall find no ease, that you will have, this is verse 65, you'll have a fearful and trembling heart, You'll have sorrow of mine. You'll fear day and night. Friend, that is the curse. Come on, that is the cursed existence. And Jesus became the curse for you so that you wouldn't have to be cursed, so that you wouldn't have to live that cursed existence where you're full of sorrow and full of anxiety and full of depression and living in fear day and night. No, that's the cursed existence Jesus became the curse for you so that you wouldn't have to be cursed. Come on, friend. He doesn't want you. God does not want you riddled down with anxiety and depression in your life. 3 John 2 says this, Beloved, I wish above all things that you prosper and be in health even as your soul prospers. The soul's dealing with the inner man on the inside. And that's where you find things like joy and peace. And that's where you find things like anxiety and depression. They happen in here. And God wants you to prosper in here. And He wants you to prosper in here with joy and peace because He loves you. Praise the Lord. And so that is the first truth about anxiety and depression. That God's will for your life is not anxiety and depression God's will for your life is joy and peace. Now, as we're closing today's broadcast, let me give you the second truth about anxiety and depression, and it's this. Friend, you can be free from anxiety and depression. I want to say that to you again. You can be free from anxiety and depression. Maybe it's some type of uh, depression that came out of uh, pregnancy after you've had your child. Maybe you were a soldier of some kind and, and you battled depression after coming back from, from the things you experienced. Doesn't matter what it is. Friend, here's the truth about it. You can be completely free from anxiety and depression. Maybe you've been having panic attacks since you've been 12 and you're 32 now. Friend, here's the truth about it. You can be free from panic attacks. You can be free from anxiety. You can be free from depression. God can make you free. Psalm 40 verse 2 says this, He, God, has brought me up also out of a horrible pit, out of the miry clay, and set my feet on a rock, and established my goings. And he has put a new song in my mouth. Friend, there is no pit so deep that God can't get you out of. Come on, there is no depression so great that God can't completely set you free. There's no anxiety, no panic attacks so great that God can't completely set you free. He can bring you up out of that horrible pit and set your feet on a rock and fill your heart overflowing with his peace and his joy. Friend, you can be free. You need to say that with me right now as you're watching the broadcast. I can be free from anxiety and depression. Why, do I, why am I saying that so strongly? Why am I repeating that so often? Because the enemy wants to thrust you into a place of hopelessness where you think, I could never be free. I've been dealing with this my whole life. My mom dealt with depression. My, my grandma dealt with depression. And so it's in my genes and, and I'll never get free from it. The best I'll do is just learn to live with it and kind of manage it and cope with it. I tell you, no, friend, no. Here's the truth. The God you serve can deliver you in such a way that you never deal with it ever again. You can be filled with joy. You can be filled with peace. You can have the last panic attack that you'll ever have the rest of your life. 
Your depressed days are over. Your sorrowful days are over. The God you serve can make you free. Psalm 91, 15, the Lord said this, He will call upon me and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him. And friends, you got to get your heart stirred up that I'm coming out of these things. I'm coming out of anxiety. I'm coming out of depression. I'm coming through these things. I'm coming over these things. The way it has been is not the way it will always be. I will enjoy the peace of the Lord that passes all understanding. And I will enjoy the joy of the Lord that is unspeakable and full of glory. I'm coming out of anxiety. I'm coming out of depression. I'm coming out of sorrow. Praise the Lord. You got to stir yourself up to these truths and to these realities. And here's the good news. You don't have to know how you're going to get out. You just have to follow the one that knows how to get you out. Come on. You don't have to know how you're going to get free from that anxiety. You don't have to know how you're going to get free from that depression. You just have to follow the one who knows how to get you out. And friend, that is the second truth you must lay hold of when it comes to anxiety and depression. And it's the truth that you can be completely free from it. Man, this is good news, isn't it? We are going to have a powerful week of broadcast this week. So make sure, friend, you don't miss any. Now, as we close in today's broadcast, I want to remind you again of those two truths about anxiety and depression. And the first one is this. God's will for your life is not anxiety and depression. That's not what He wants for you. His will for your life is joy and peace. And then the second truth about anxiety and depression is this. You can be completely free from it. Let's pray. Father, Lord, I just release faith today over everybody watching the broadcast. And Lord, any of them that are dealing with anxiety and depression of any kind. Lord, I declare over their lives that they're coming out, they're coming through, and they're coming over. I declare over their lives that their depressed days, their, their anxiety-riddled days, their panic attack days are over, and they are getting completely free from it. Now, Lord, we release faith, and we ask you all this week on the broadcast, to give us your truth, the truth, the truth of your word about anxiety and depression. We are asking you to reveal it to us by your spirit. Help us to lay hold of it and put it into practice. And we do thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Friend, thank you so much for watching today's broadcast. Now, don't forget to come back tomorrow for Tuesday's edition of our Faith for Life broadcast. And we're going to continue this series entitled, The Truth about anxiety and depression. We'll see you then. Hey everybody, Matthew Larry here. Hey, if this broadcast is a blessing to you, and if the Lord is using this broadcast to minister to you, we would love to hear your testimony. You know, we like to share with our partners how their support is helping us to minister the Word of God and take the message of faith to people all over the world, and your testimonies will help us do just that. And so if you've been watching the broadcast and if you've been enjoying the broadcast, if the Lord has been ministering to you through the broadcast, we would love to hear your testimony. So please just go to mam.tv and send in a testimony to us of how the Faith for Life broadcast is blessing your life. Friend, it doesn't have to be long. We just want to hear from you. So thanks in advance for your testimonies and we'll see you soon.